Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is a dinosaur action-adventure thriller starring Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. It's a direct sequel to 2015's Jurassic World and the fifth film in the Jurassic Park franchise. Fallen Kingdom follows Claire Deering, who, after the catastrophic failure of the Jurassic World Park under her leadership, not to mention the traumatic deaths of dozens of innocent guests, is now leading a Save the Dinosaurs campaign. It turns out, the park was built on a dormant volcano, which is now about to erupt, threatening to re-extinctify the dinosaurs. Despite there being another island with dinosaurs and research. Anyway, some rich old dying dude named Benjamin Lockwood, who we've never heard of before, and who claims to be John Hammond's original partner in the Jurassic Park venture? Look, he's got the amber cane! It must be true! Lockwood needs Claire to lead an expedition back to the Jurassic World Park because her handprint can activate the dinosaurs' tracking implants, making it easier to round them up and save them. She agrees, and soon guilt trips her old flame, Owen Grady, to join the expedition, reminding him that his trained raptor pet, Blue, will be wiped out by the volcano too. Since Owen has been living in a van down by the river, he accepts. But things at the CGI Lockwood estate are not as they appear. With the sinister heir to the estate, Eli Mills, having other intentions for the dinosaurs. Ew. Uh, quick summary? Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is stupid. But... It isn't silly enough to be fun. The film is horribly structured, poorly written, and predictable, with little intrigue, stretching out two events to two hours, and lacking in any meaningful character growth. It's a cartoon that is pretending to seriously honor the Jurassic Park legacy. That's embarrassing. Very little is earned, the characters are laughably invincible, and the physics are Pure fantasy at this point, not to mention the bad acting and copious amounts of forced animal rights sympathy for killer dinosaurs. Worse, it's all just one big prologue pitch for a third Jurassic World movie, and Dr. Ian Malcolm, played by Jeff Goldblum, is just a five minute cameo. Marketing bait. Fallen Kingdom is a trashy back alley trick. This is Universal saying to audiences, Hey, I'll give you some dinosaurs for some money. <laughs> I'll give you some dinosaurs for some money, man. Hey, hey, you want the dinosaur? <laughs> if you give me some money, man, I'll give you some dinosaurs for some money, man. <laughs> hey, hey, I'll give you some dinosaurs for some money, man. Hey, hey, I'll give you some dinosaurs for some money, man. Uh, maybe you'll enjoy the trick. I'm not judging, but it's still sad how far it's fallen. The rest of this review will contain spoilers for Acts 1 and 2 and my general thoughts on the ending. Here's the timestamp for my final rating and pros cons list. Up front, Fallen Kingdom is stupid and tonally inept, and I don't use those words lightly. Allow me to spoil a scene from the midway point of this movie. Owen Grady has been shot with a tranquilizer rifle containing powerful enough doses to sedate massive dinosaurs for several hours. Dude should be dead or in a coma. He has been left to die in the island's jungle when the volcano begins to erupt. Lava slowly flows towards him. Miraculously, he awakens! The lava is inches away from his body. He should realistically be on fire. But the writers are using childish, don't touch the lava, logic here. And a slapstick sequence ensues with Owen flailing his sleeping limbs around and rolling his body away from the encroaching lava. This was allowed to be in the movie. Maybe the ridiculousness of this premise could have been saved by better direction, editing, music, and cinematography. Perhaps if the camera was at Owen's eye level, seeing the approaching lava like a tsunami, placing us in his harrowing struggle, it might have worked. Instead, the scene only starts out that way and is mostly composed of long shots and medium shots looking down on Owen as he rolls about. My audience and I were laughing. I think we were supposed to, but why? You've now killed all of the tension and are stating that Owen is invincible. I should no longer be concerned or invested in his well-being. He is Ace Ventura. Laugh and enjoy the wacky predicaments as he's engulfed in deadly volcanic ash and jumps hundreds of feet without injury. 
If the main character's safety is a joke, then where is the tension? This is a thriller. Fallen Kingdom's writing is filled with the most bizarre and irrelatable decision making. Look, I don't want to get bogged down in hundreds of nitpicks, but here are some highlights. <laughs> There's a scene with a crowd running away in a panic and screaming in terror, but the evil general walks toward the danger and yells, Where's my bonus? What is going on in his head? What could possibly be going on in his head? Some people get killed because they didn't immediately hit the up button on an elevator. A raptor needs a blood transfusion and any three-fingered carnivore will work as a donor. Wink, wink. There's a forced betrayal twist on the island, which makes no sense. The mission was to get the dinosaurs off the island. There is no reason for the heroes to suspect foul play, yet the general leaves Owen for dead and locks Claire and Techie away to die. Why? Just keep up appearances until you're back on the mainland. You're showing your hand for no reason. Ooh. And then there's the scene where the humans are locked inside of a room with a giant dinosaur and they decide to cut the lights off so they can more easily sneak around. Dinosaurs see better in the dark than humans. What is happening? Oh, man. Uh, and then there was a scene where someone shot a gun underwater and it managed to penetrate something that we were told in the last movie was bulletproof. <laughs> Whew. At another point, Claire and her techie friend open a tunnel, hear a large dinosaur coming, and instead of immediately looking for another escape route, especially since there's a ladder clearly visible to the right, they stand in front of the tunnel, waiting to find out what dinosaur it is. The techie is like, Please don't be a T-Rex! Please don't be a T-Rex! It's a T-Rex! Claire is like, Nah, it's not a T-Rex! Who... Hairs, you morons! Run! It turns out to be a different large meat-eater dinosaur, and Claire brags. See? Not a T-Rex. The fruit! Did I just hear? Oh, one last one, one last one. The scene with the little girl in the bed from the trailers, she was not asleep before that dinosaur broke into her room. She had been previously running away from said dinosaur, locked the door, and hid under the blankets. Any normal child, wink wink, would hide under the bed. But the filmmakers wanted the image of a little girl being confronted by a dinosaur in her bed. So they just contrived it. In Fallen Kingdom, there is a lot of forced writing to achieve Admittedly, interesting images and scenarios, but because it's forced, I'm taken out of the moment. I can't relate to these characters. Speaking of which, what about the characters in the story structure? Claire is the main character. She has unconvincingly become a dinosaur rights advocate. This makes little sense to me. If I ran a dinosaur park that resulted in dozens of fatalities, my act of restitution would not be to think of the poor dinosaurs. I would be dedicated to aiding the human victims of wildlife attacks or personally helping the families affected by the Jurassic World incident. This dinosaur's rights angle feels forced. If anything, the businesswoman Claire that I know from the first movie would be looking to recuperate her financial losses and would be secretly working with the bad guys. If we're still in the continuity of the first movie, Owen is the one who respected and cared for the dinosaurs. Yet he has to be reminded of this by Claire. The two of them have broken up. Again. Just to repeat their romance from the last film. Except that there is no development for their relationship beyond the introductory scenes. No quiet pauses on the adventure during which they have time to reflect on what went wrong. The good times they had. Why they are or aren't compatible. The only one who's questioning his compatibility with Pratt is the techie. Oh. The romance is established in Act 1. Nothing develops. Kiss. Claire or Owen might as well have been replaced with a new love interest. And I know which one would be easier to replace. I don't mean that in a bad way, though, Bryce Dallas Howard. Unlike a lot of people, I really do like the village. Maybe I shouldn't have said that either. Oh, frick!
Character growth in this movie amounts to Claire needing to learn that dinosaurs maybe shouldn't be saved. Why? She had already learned the dangers of human-dinosaur coexistence quite vividly in Jurassic World 1. But she had the exact opposite takeaway as Dr. Malcolm and Dr. Grant did from their movies. And who are these four lunatics that you're, you're trying to con into this? No force on Earth or Heaven could get me on that island. My mission in life is to ensure the safety and protection of these animals. So this is a velociraptor. So many people loved Jurassic World. And what are you going to do to make sure that your children have the same experience that you did? Tons of TNT. We must save the dinosaurs. This makes her illogical and unrelatable. Owen needs to reconnect with humanity and find a purpose in life because he's a bum living in a van down by the river. Honestly, he's just along for the ride, which I really appreciated because Chris Pratt's presence carries this movie and makes it tolerable for me. Owen wants to do the right thing by his raptor girl, Blue. Save your dog from a volcano! That's solid motivation. I can dig it. There is also Claire's young assistants. One, a paleo veterinarian, a certified dinosaur vet, who's never seen a real dinosaur. Yeah, and I'm a pilot. I've just never seen a plane before. <laughs> Off to Neverland. <laughs> Then, there's the stereotypical techie who loses his glasses halfway through the film and never has a problem seeing. Are they vanity rims? Screw that guy! I have to wear glasses due to genetics, you hippie! Of the two assistants, the paleo vet has some good energy and screen presence. The techie has really bad comedic timing and flat delivery. He's the comic relief. We pause on him for a laugh several times, and the kid is a snooze fest. Except when he's screaming like a little girl. Is that not PC? Here, listen. <laughs> and you know what? That's probably what got him the part. Those are the only times that people laughed when he was doing the scream. Still, both of these assistants are throwaway characters. At one point, the techie guy yells, Why am I here? Exactly. Why are you here? Two-thirds of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is spent with Claire, Owen, the vet, and the techie on their adventure. And the other third is dedicated to some random little girl back at the Lockwood estate as she overhears Eli Mills' villainous plans. Who is she? Why should I care about this girl? Hey, 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 hey. If this were real life, of course I'd care about some little girl's safety in a heartbeat. But whenever you're a character in a movie, there needs to be an assurance of relevance. Everything that I'm watching on the screen has to eventually justify itself. And the longer it goes without doing so, the more pointless it seems to the audience. There are no main characters with this little girl. And the movie keeps cutting away from the action on the island to scenes of her talking with her grandpa and sneaking around the mansion to spoil the villain's plot. Yeah. Instead of learning the bad guy's motives, along with Claire and Owen, who we find out 20 minutes earlier with the little girl. In fact, there is so much redundant, over-explained villain motivation left in the movie to keep the little girl's screen time up. She even stumbles across a vacated Apple computer with a paused QuickTime video of Owen and Blue training together. Everything that she conveniently finds out will also be discovered by Owen and Claire again later on and more efficiently. It isn't until the end of the film that we find out that the little girl was the most important character and caring about her was a big priority. In that case, maybe Claire, since the romance wasn't working between her and Owen, should have stayed behind at the mansion, giving the audience a reason to connect with and care for the little girl. I remember that in Jurassic World 1, Claire's character didn't really care for or respect the kids. Last time I saw you, you were like, that must have been what, four years ago? Uh, seven. Seven years, but, you know, close. <laughs> How old? Uh, the, um... The older one, he's like, a, he's high school aged, a few years. You don't know how old your nephews are? 
Yeah, everything's great. The boys are having fun, everyone's... Really? Because I just hung up with Zach and he said that you weren't even with them. <sighs> this little girl subplot could have been interesting character growth for Claire, learning to be less robotic and more motherly. Well, I promise tomorrow is worth a lot less than trying today. You'll see when you have kids. Yeah, if. When. It's worth it. Bye, Mom. Bye. That way, I actually care about the girl because Claire cares about the girl. But the people on the island need Claire's handprint. Look, if you're writing the movie, just write that Owen's handprint can work too, since Owen was Blue's trainer. <sighs> but no, the little girl means nothing to me and is hanging around with people I don't know. There's just so many opening scenes introducing all the characters that won't be going with the main characters, yet the little girl is kept in the shadows with no intro, even though she becomes the most important character ever. Fuck! Fallen Kingdom is mostly action, even though there's only, like, two set pieces. Bloated exposition and setup with very little substance. I only really cared about Owen saving his raptor pet Blue. But that's lost in the clutter, too. This film continues to double down on the dinosaurs for military application that started in Jurassic World 1. The villain, Eli Mills, is over the top, going out of his way to be evil when he just could have put on a cool facade. As soon as that guy's dead, I get the magic. It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon. It's for kids at this point. It's for kids. It's only for kids. But it's not fun. You don't get to see much of the abandoned theme park. The general is evil for no reason as well. You remember the genetically modified Indominus Rex from Jurassic World? Well, now there's an Indominus Raptor. Woo! whoop it doo Ugh. And the entire thing is basically a soft reboot of the Lost World Jurassic Park 2. Just like Jurassic World was a soft reboot of Jurassic Park. Jurassic World is to The Force Awakens, as Fallen Kingdom is to The Last Jedi. <laughs> uh, there are some striking, geeky images, cheesy fan service, including two T-Rex poses in Roars this time, and a long neck reveal, and the usual quality musical score, I'll admit. And I kind of feel bad because you can really tell that the prop and makeup department put their heart and soul into making all sorts of cool animatronics, truly listening to all the criticism from the fans of the first Jurassic World movie about how they use CGI in moments that they didn't even need to. I can tell that they put a lot of hard work into it and I did appreciate it, but it's all in service of a movie that's hollow this time. And that stinks for them. All of this is leading up to a big reveal with massive moral and philosophical implications that feels totally unearned and tacked on. It's a subject that's big enough for its own movie, made to be a last minute twist here. Yet still, the movie acts like it earned a heartfelt message resolution to the twist, which we had only learned about 10 minutes ago. Due to the lack of character growth or substance, coupled with the stretched out nature of the events, Fallen Kingdom just comes off like a long trailer or appetizer for what could be a much better third film. And if there's anything I've learned, it's this. Bad movies find a way. I give Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom one star out of five. It is just so head-scratching and puzzling in its writing and execution. You may be able to enjoy it on a surface level, like, cool, it's a dinosaur movie. Or maybe you can enjoy it as like a cult movie, like it's so bad it's good. Like you're in constant disbelief and you're laughing at all the stuff that's going on. I got some pretty good laughs out of this movie. But there is no doubt that Fallen Kingdom strays far from the grounded humanity of the original Jurassic Park 25 years ago. My recommendation, skip it. Unless you're curious. <laughs> but if you saw the trailers, you really have seen the movie. Take care. Fallen Kingdom is a dinosaur action-adventure thriller starring Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard. Get excited. It's... <laughs> <laughs> worse, <laughs> worse, <laughs> but the right, 
But the riders are using... <laughs> a raptor needs a blood transfusion and any three-fingered carnivore... Carnivore? Carnivore? A raptor needs a blood transfusion and any three-fingered carnivore will work as a... Carnivore. Man, am I sweating. Oh my goodness. Uh, back to the review. Two-thirds of Jurassic 4... Jurassic 4. Hippie. The film... The film... The film... The film, once again... The f <laughs> Yahoo! Toe and Bell's in this. He's got nice teeth. Do you remember the sounds they made? I try not to. This is no longer a movie franchise. It's a rescue mission. <laughs>